Okay, this is video number two in this series. It is based on the Big M, the Florida Math Standards. This is a document provided by the Florida Department of Education with sample problems of things that you need to know by testing time. So we're going to go through this, these questions. There's about 10 to 15 per video, and this is video two. It goes over these two standards here. So the first one, polygon A, B, C, D, E, and A, B, C, D, E are prime are similar and shown. Part A, if measure of angle A is 103 degrees, what is a measure of angle? Well, if angle A prime is 103, what is the measure of angle A? So in similar shapes, the angles are actually the same. So angle A should also be 103 degrees. Next one, similar scenario, similar shapes. A measure of angle D is 97 degrees. What other angle has a measure of 97 degrees? Oh, I labeled B instead of D. 97 degrees, what other angle has a measure of 97? It would be D prime. So the measure of, it says prime right here, so just D prime is 97 degrees. Okay, the next example, a little bit different. It says that BC to BC prime is in a ratio of one to three. In similar shapes, all the segments should be in that same ratio. So what we're going to do is put DC over DC prime in that same ratio. So 2x plus 1.5 over 5.1. So again, DC over DC prime equal to BC over BC prime, which is 1 to 3. And now to solve for x, we can use cross multiplication. So I'm going to cross multiply here. 5.1 times 1 is just 5.1 equals 3 times 2x plus 1.5. And then distribute here by multiplying 6x plus 4.5. 0.6 equals 6x divided by 6, and x equals 0.1. So that is my answer here, 0.1. Okay, next question. Okay, it says triangles A, B, C, and D, E, F are shown where angle A is congruent to D, C is congruent to F, and A, C is congruent to D, F. Are the triangles congruent? So what they're looking for here is do you have side angle side? Do you have angle side angle? Do you have angle angle side? So all of these things prove that triangles are congruent or side side side. We were looking for one of those. The only combination that doesn't work is ASS. So if you get a cuss word, know that that does not prove congruence. Okay, so I'm going to label the corresponding or equal parts. So A is equal to D. And then C is equal to F. And then segment AC is equal to DF here. Okay, so I'm looking for one of these matching parts on both, and it looks like I have angle, side, angle, angle, side, angle matching on both. So therefore, yes, they are congruent. So true. Okay, then the next question goes along with that. Once you prove that they're congruent, um, it wants you to find the length of EF. Well, Corresponding parts, it gives us an expression here. I know it's hard to see my printer is not very good. I believe this says 2x plus 7, and this says 5x minus 2, and this says 4x plus 5. Well, in congruent triangles, the corresponding segments should be equal. So this would equal this. I know this corresponds with this. A, B, C, so like A, B should correspond with D, E right here, and I can use that there. So 2x plus 7 equals 5x minus 2, and I'm going to solve for x. And x equals 3, but this isn't asking for x, it's asking for the length of EF. Now that I have x, though, I can find the length of EF right here by plugging in the value. So 4 times 3 plus 5. 12 plus 5 would be 17, and that is the length of EF. Okay, next page. Okay, it says ABE and ABC are similar. What are the lengths of AC in units? So we're looking for the length of this. It also shows that this is parallel to this, and when that happens, um, this segment corresponds to this, 
in the same ratio that this corresponds to this. So we're going to set up a proportion to solve this for x to begin with. So I'm going to do 4 over 5x minus 3 equals 5 over 4x plus 3. And then use cross multiplication to solve. So 4 times 4x plus 3 equals 5 times 5x minus 3. And I'm just going to continue solving here. 12 equals 9x. 9x equals 27. So x equals 3. But again, it doesn't want 3. It wants the measure of ac. So ac, it looks like it's 5 plus 4x plus 3. So I just need to plug in my value for x. Seventeen plus three is twenty. So the measure of AC is twenty, and that is the answer. Okay, next problem. This one here threw off my students a bit, um, but it's actually a pretty easy que question once you know what they're looking for. It says, "What are the coordinates of each of the following points?" But this graph doesn't have very many numbers. It's a lot of letters. So first of all, point J, which is right here, what are the coordinates? Well, J is at the origin on the graph. So the coordinates of J would be 0, 0. It would, I know these blanks are kind of spread out. We put it in Schoology, but um, it would look like this. So 0, 0. Then for point K right here, the coordinates for K, it looks like this distance is A for the X, and then it goes up to D on the Y. So our coordinates here would be A, like this. I'll just put it in like it would look like. Those are the coordinates. And then for L, point L right here, it is at B on the x-axis and it goes up to D on the y. So the coordinates for L would be B, D. And then for M, this one right here, M is right here. It is at a length of C on the x-axis and it's on the x-axis. So it doesn't go up or down any. So be Y would be zero. So for point M, the coordinates would be C, 0. Okay, and the next problem. Okay, so trapezoid, trapezoid that we saw in the last problem is graphed on the coordinate plane. It wants to know the length of KL now. So KL is right here. And again, we're not using numbers, we're using letters. So it looks like L is at B and K is at A on the x-axis, so it would just be B minus A. And then NP right here, this is a mid-segment of the trapezoid. The mid-segment is the average of the two bases. So we need to add the lengths of the two bases and divide by 2 to find that mid-segment length. So here's how I see it would be the length of KL would be B minus A plus the length of this base, which would be C, and then divide by 2 to get the average to get this. Now, how would I type that in a, the box? You might put one slash two, and then B minus A plus C, and that's how you can put it in the box. Okay, next one, this one, it says, what is the length of JK? So this segment right here. And again, we're not dealing with numbers, we're dealing with letters. So we are actually gonna use Pythagorean theorem. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And this length right here is a, so a squared plus this length, which is d squared, will equal the length of this segment j, k, and that'll be squared. So then to find that length, we have to take the square root of both sides, and this is the answer to that problem. Okay, and then this one, multi-step problem, there's three different parts to this, and we'll just take it one part at a time. Okay, what are the lengths of the parallel sides of the garden? So here, it's saying that we have a trapezoid garden. It wants to know the length of these parallel sides of the trapezoid. It also says in the question that the mid-segment of the garden is 10 feet long. So this mid-segment is 10. Well, in a trapezoid, the mid-segment is the average of these two values, and we can use that to find x, which is what we're trying to solve for here. So if we add these two parallel sides, divide it by 2, we should get 10. So x plus x plus 4 divided by 2 equals 10, and then we can solve this here. So multiply this by 2, multiply this by 2, get x plus x plus 4 equals 20, 
continue solving, and x equals 8. So x equals 8, and that would be 8 feet, and then 8 plus 4 would be 12 feet. So this side is 8 feet, this side is 12 feet. Let's make a note of that because we're going to need that for the next part of the problem. So for this part, same problem, but now it's asking um, how many tulips are needed to line the parallel sides and the bulbs would be needed to plant, be planted three inches apart. So here we have eight feet, right? And then here we have 12 feet and the bulbs are placed three inches apart. So first of all, eight feet plus 12 feet is 20 feet where the tulip bulbs are placed. Um, but we need to convert this to inches and each foot has 12 inches, right? So we multiply those two numbers to get how many inches need to be covered. And then the bulbs are three inches apart. So we take 240 and divide by three to get 80 bulbs, like tulip bulbs. So this one's 80. Okay, and remember this number because it continues on the next page. So we need 80 bulbs to cover those two sides. This one, it says, okay, the bulbs are placed three inches apart. You have 80 tulip bulbs. How many bags will be needed to purchase? In the problem up here, it says tulips are sold in bags of 25. Um, as you may know, 25 times three would be 75. That doesn't quite cover it. So we're going to need four bags. Four bags would be needed to cover the, to get 80 tulip bulbs. So right here, just four. Okay, and that is all for this one. There will be a video number three coming up soon, um, so stay tuned for that. I'll also have it linked below um, for you to click on there.